Hello and welcome back to the tutorial for Civ 5. So, we're getting close to the medieval era now. And the medieval era is kind of the era. There are kind of three sections to the game, sort of. There's the early game, which is the ancient and classical era. In these two areas, your focus is kind of on settling your cities and growing your cities to get a good foundation. Then the mid-game is the medieval era, the renaissance era, and to a lesser extent the industrial era. And this is where your focus is more on taking the cities you already have and making them better rather than over-founding new cities. The focus here is kind of more on science a lot of the time than it is on things like food and production. And the late game is, you know, the modern era, the atomic era, information era. This is where most games will kind of end up where they will end. So, yeah, that's kind of how things go. I don't know. But in any case, we're approaching the mid-game now, where we just kind of want to hunker down and get going with what we've been doing. This barbarian here could still be an issue. Um... I'm considering sending a unit out to deal with him. In fact, I just got a unit, actually, from my city-state here. I'm allied to the city-state, well, I'm friends with them, because I cleared out the barbarian camp near them. So that's good. They just gave me a free unit. Which, I mean, I'm not complaining. Alright, so, granny for you. One of my cities just carried it, but it's this one. So that's fine. Capital's about to go. I could really use some gold and some happiness at this point. Those are the two things that I am severely lacking. Um, I'm going to switch over to work that time. Um... I might produce another worker at this point. Generally, you want to have one worker per city. It's usually what I tend to go with. And that works moderately well. I hope I don't lose this warrior. That would be annoying. I did not. We built the hang gardens. So our city is going to be growing a lot faster. Uh, seven turns isn't bad. In fact, it would be growing a lot faster than that if we were happy. So I'm going to build a couple chariots just to help with the barbarian problem. It's just definitely becoming a problem at this point. So, Korea's gotten a pantheon. Which is fine. Vatican City still hates me. We've improved our sugar, and that's brought us up to positive happiness. Um, at this point, I'm probably going to start putting farms. And a lot of the time, at this point, what I'm going to be doing is building farms. Yeah. Especially along rivers. Because river farms, especially after I get civil service, they're going to be really, really good. Now, I haven't actually explored this area very well, so I'm going to send this trait down to do that. More pantheons. Okay, farm. Alright, so we've got the spices now. I might actually go get a second spices. The reason being that I can then trade my excess spices to someone else for something I don't have. Now I'm just gonna... You can use the arrow keys in this mode to just go between your cities. So I'm gonna make sure to have locked down a lot of the tiles next to the fresh water, because those are the ones I'm going to be improving next. At this point I would consider building a library, because that would give me four signs. Four signs is starting to become a little bit more useful. Let's complete the Stonehenge. And this seems to really like building wonders for some reason in this game. So, 
now that I'm building a library in my capital, it's probably worth it to start building libraries everywhere. The reason being, after I go... After I get civil service, I'm going to be going for philosophy to get that national college. Probably going to build that in my capital. Then after that, I'm going to go for education to get universities. Universities are absolutely essential to get as soon as possible. So I'm going to send food to Washington here. And then again, building a granary in my additional cities. I have one trade route slot that I'm not using, so I can use that to send more food to the capital. So just lock down the river tiles here. Finished tradition now. So that means all of our cities will be growing even faster. So we've finished our library there. So here I'm going to I could build a caravan here, but I'm not. I'm actually going to build a library. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a caravan in the capital. And then I can, once I have that caravan, I can switch him over to the city and then send food back to the capital. So you don't necessarily have to build the caravan in the city you want to send it from, because you can kind of, you can move it around and I'll show you how to do that next turn. Uh, apparently we've got another unit. Uh, where is it? Ah, chariot archer. That's very kind of. So, lock down again the river tiles priority. Now, I'm, you can click this button here to send him to another city. And you can click this button to establish a trade route. You, you can trade with city states to get gold, but at this point yeah, I'm, I'm losing gold, but it's not that much. It'll take a while before I run out. So, and actually, yeah, I'm going to send him to Boston and then cart food back to the capital. Now I'm going to build probably a stable to get more production. Start putting farms along here. So I'm probably going to want to work this tile and that tile. No. Now I could start building roads between my cities, but until your cities are roughly size six, you it costs maintenance for each tile of road. You do gain money for the connection, and the connection is based on the size of the city. So at size five, it breaks even. So a road between New York and Washington right now, because New York is size 5, I would be getting the same amount of gold from the route as it would cost to maintain. And then once the city grows above 5 is when I would actually start making a profit. So Boston and Philadelphia are way too small to consider building roads. New York could conceivably have a road some point soon. So I'm going to add some production to this cattle. and send food back to Washington, yet again. So this city is growing exuberantly quickly, which is, um, which is great. Bigger cities are, like I said earlier, bigger cities are almost always better. All right. So we finished our stable. I'm going to go into a market to help us with our gold problem. At the moment, we're actually losing science because our budget is in deficit. You see minus 14.75 from budget deficit. So, at the moment, I'm going to want to fix that as soon as possible. In fact, it might be worth taking... Instead of assigning this population to this tile, I might actually assign it to one of these tiles to get some gold. Normally, gold is less valuable unless you're in negative gold, in which case it's almost essential to keep it going. And that being said, I'm actually going to build a market there as well. So get these two gold tiles working. So you know, we're doing a lot better in terms of gold. Um, I'm going to build another worker. Uh, 
Alright, now I'm just gonna start putting farms all the way along this river. You can put farms on hills as long as they're next to rivers. So that's good to keep in mind. So we've got civil service now, which means I can try to build Chichen Itza. Now at this point I can check and see if anyone has gotten this. 211, 221, 221, 221. It is possible someone else has gotten civil service, although that discount might be because I have it. So after, once you, after you have a tech, it's a little bit more difficult to see if anyone else has it, because it counts whether or not you have it in the kind of calculation. So he's going to go over to Philadelphia. Alright. We have a great prophet, which means we can found a religion. Now just like with the Pantheon, in multiplayer you're going to want to have kind of an idea of what your religion is, and then pick it all very, very quickly. Because if someone else gets a religion the same turn as you, and they get it before you, then you have to wait. So I'm just going to pick one of these randomly. Now, there are, are a lot of religious beliefs that you can choose from, and the vast majority of them are pretty terrible. Ceremonial burial is decent, church property is decent, this one's pretty bad. The reason this one's bad is because it's not actually 100 gold on quick speed, it's modified by the game speed, so on quick speed it's actually going to be 67 gold rather than 100. And it's not that much gold to begin with. Uh, this one's pretty useless, this one's kind of bad, this one's pretty bad. This one can be useful. This one is fairly good, but really Tithe is probably the best one. So I'm going to pick Tithe, and then for the follower beliefs, generally the best ones are something like Pagodas, um, something like Aestheticism. Shrines provide plus one happiness. You're going to have a shrine in every city, so it's basically just plus one happiness per city. Um, and religious community. Religious community is, is a fairly good one. Now, I'm actually going to get religious community. I, would, I prioritize getting pagodas first, but the reason is that I'm getting religious community first is because the... Um, in order to enhance your religion, I can get both of these. I can get one now and then one of these later when I enhance. But it takes a great profit to enhance. Great profits can only be generated if you have faith. So what you're going to be wanting to do is save your faith for your next great profit. And pagodas cost faith. So if I get pagodas now, I'm not going to actually buy a pagoda until after I've enhanced my religion. Because otherwise I'd be delaying the profit. Which means I wouldn't actually get a bonus from having pagodas until after I've enhanced it anyway. So religious community is going to give me more of a bonus sooner. And hopefully pagodas will still be available when I enhance. It's kind of a gamble to do this, because there's a good chance someone else will take pagodas before you can enhance. But if I get lucky, then it'll be fairly nice. So our cities are growing fairly well. We are still unhappy and losing gold, which is not the greatest position to be in. But hopefully Tithe and Pagodas will help us cope with that. So Aski has completed Petra. This is not a very good Petra city, because it's only got one desert hill. Desert hills are amazing with Petra, but really you want to have two or three to build Petra. This is not the best place to build it. And it looks like he's founded, yeah, he's founded Hinduism. Now what you can actually do is you can click Faith here, and then go to Beliefs, and you can see what he took. So he took plus two gold for a city following the religion. He got mosques, and he got... Ah, uh, that's it. So he didn't get pagodas, which is good for me, because I want pagodas. Pagodas are better than the other religious building buildings, because they give happiness. They give two happiness. Most religious buildings give plus one happiness, and then culture and faith. The pagodas give to happiness, which is a lot better. So I'm actually going to start on a road here between New York and Washington. Alright, 
so we built Chichen Itza, that brings us up to, well actually, not really that great happiness. Um, I could build the Oracle, but I don't really see a reason to. I've finished Tradition. Um, I don't really want any of these other ones, to be honest. I mean, Commerce would be okay. Exploration's not really useful, because I've only got one coastal city. Aesthetics isn't really that great, unless you're going for culture, which I'm not at the moment. Patronage gives you bonuses to city-states, which I've only meant like three city-states. It's not going to be that big. Honor's good for military, which I'm not really fighting any wars or planning to. Liberty's good for expansion, which I'm not planning on doing either. Piety's good for faith, but I've already found a religion. I don't really have any need for any extra faith. So, getting a free social policy at this stage actually wouldn't be all that useful. I might build a temple to speed up my enhancing of my religion. In fact, yeah, I'm gonna do that. Keep blocking the river tiles. Okay. So this city is doing just fine. Dropped into negative happiness once more. Uh, you can build a library. And then you are going to build a writer's guild, probably. Simply because having the uh, specialists assigned to writers gives your city extra culture, which will give us social policies a little bit faster. Now here it's worth mentioning or er, worth checking. See, I'm not top of military, but I'm not last either, so there's no really... I'm not going to need to build any military units. So, and could build walls. I mean, he could try to attack me, in which case walls would be useful. But, I mean, the terrain here is so difficult, it's nothing but forest and jungle, that an attack against the city is going to be almost impossible just anyway. So, he could build a barracks, which is alright. I guess, but I'm not planning on, again, I'm not planning on building any units. So I guess I'll build an amphitheater, because I don't have anything else to build. So I am out of gold at the moment, can't buy any more tiles. So, we finished theology. This city's production is really not that great, so I'm going to build a water mill to increase that. In fact, it might be worth taking him and building a mine here to get that extra production going. I don't know why this city state build a, build a, build a fort there. It's kind of odd. So I could build one of these religious uh, wonders now. Bor, Bador, and Hagia. If I build the Hagia Sophia, I'd be able to enhance my religion a lot sooner. And that doesn't sound all that bad. To be honest, I don't really have anything else to be building right now. Why not? I'll go for it. I could be building units to... I mean, it's never bad to be top on military. Especially considering I'm top on almost everything. If this was a multiplayer game, I would be a huge target right now. So, if this was a multiplayer game, I would probably prioritize units over this wonder. Because unless you're, if you're top on like all of this and you're not top of military, someone is going to try and kill you. So, but this seems this is a uh, single player game against the AI. It really doesn't matter. I could probably be last in army and still not get attacked. I'm still losing gold, so what I might do is adopt commerce, just to kind of offset that. Like I said, none of these other ones are really that useful. So, I'm gonna get commerce. I'm actually in positive gold now, which is kind of nice. So I'm gonna try to connect these two cities up with roads. That'll be good. So 
so we can just kind of keep going from here with that with uh, that work just keep improving all the tiles um, I've kind of run out of useful tiles to work at this point there's nothing but like generic forest unimproved plains not even next to a river so what I'm actually going to do is with this citizen I'm going to pop him in this writer's guild just to increase my culture gonna go there and build a farm. I could use a work boat on this pearl so that would give me some more, uh, more happiness. But I'm going to cut the video here. We'll continue next time going through the medieval, hopefully into the renaissance era, and just generally just pushing forward. So hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.